Welcome. A little loud. Is it just right? A little loud. Now better? Okay. Yeah, good. <clears throat> I'd like to um, dedicate the service today uh, and um, uh, dedicate our positive potentials generated for our dear Sasha, who um, died a few days ago. Some of you already know that, but some may have not. So um, we're going to uh, let's say a few words and then do some uh, tar practice. Um, Sasha, um, she did, of course, a lot of medicine Buddha practice, but I would also um, catch her, uh, come in, catch her at the uh, sitting in front of the tar shrine early in the morning. Um, Usually uh, drive by here before going to Middleway Health and let's see your car often. <clears throat> and I also want to thank others who have um, continued to do the um, our practice. So um, I'll fit that in today. So uh, I, I do have a topic I wanted to talk on, like <laughs> kind of a little bit, I don't know, provocative, like Tantra magic, something like that. <clears throat> so I really, I really like magic a lot. And um, there are um, many magical things that happen, uh, miraculous things uh, that different um, people can manifest. The Buddha was able to manifest many different miracles. Um, <clears throat> And I'll talk about that a little bit, but uh, I want to concentrate on on two things. Um, <clears throat> um, Jigni Lingpa was um, a Terton who's um, mainly uh, uh, reinvigorated on the teachings of Long Chempa, and um, um, we have a beautiful uh, all uh, gold. Tonka of Jigme Lingpa uh, above the uh, audiovisual booth there. So a little bit, uh, all I can see is <laughs> black hair, you know, like uh, all gold, like beautiful, incredible. So um, uh, Jigme Lingpa was an incredible discoverer. Um, particularly uh, practices that are practiced today, Long Chin Ninti practice, um, vast expanse heart drop practice, um, but also uh, he's very famous for, you know, people said, well, what's the greatest miracle? Because he became known as somebody who could, um, was very visionary and uh, could, um, you know, had complete mastery of the phenomenal world. So what do you think uh, Jigme Lingpa said? I say it all the time, so someone should remember, right? Through miracles, to be able to change the negative thoughts to a positive thought? Correct. So <laughs> it sounds just like, like Lojong, right? You know, just like that. So, um, so there are two things that are there that um, are magical. It's magical to hear the truth, and it's magical to uh, come in contact with, uh, you know, qualified teacher and teachings. So um, <clears throat> one reason we, uh, in our uh, meditations, we do to start, you know, sometimes we call them prayers, but I, they're meditations are meant to express truth. Um, we um, pay homage to uh, teachers in the lineage. So um, <clears throat> why do we do this? Is because the uh, Buddha um, said some very famous words, which I'll repeat again, or paraphrase, the Buddha cannot um, wash away uh, karma with water. The Buddha cannot heal by laying on of hands. The Buddha cannot transfer realization. The Buddhas just teach. Yeah. 
So the magic is that um, us uh, strange creatures uh, can actually learn. We can benefit from teaching. We can actually learn something. We can actually apply ourselves. So it's miraculously that we can make intentional uh, change and development in our lives. Of course, we know that there are many uh, sentient beings and uh, sentient sapient beings. They're both uh, alive and knowing beings. But um, <clears throat> definitely we could say that in this planet anyway, human beings have uh, perhaps the greatest ability to learn and change things. We also learn bad habits, though, too, don't we? <laughs> but the miracle is that we can learn something. That uh, we can uh, change uh, misunderstood view. When we say negative view, it isn't just like, I think people suck, too. I think people are great. But Jigme Link is also saying, you know, changing that delusional view to the true view of how things actually are. So it is a miracle that we can wake up. <clears throat> but uh, we need to hear the teachings, we need to apply them, and we need a teacher um, so that uh, they all can come together, hopefully, uh, in quick alternation, or maybe even all at once. When um, the teacher, the student, the teachings, and the experience come together all at once, then um, uh, it uh, truly feels miraculous, doesn't it? But um, most of the time, it's a slow, it's a slow miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, I like that hard work miracle. Because usually you think, and you know, miracles like instantaneous, you know, like that. And it's true, at some point, the fruit drops, you know, might have been getting ready for months, but then drops. <laughs> but the important piece, the miracle is to realize that uh, we belong to a teaching lineage uh, and that um, the, uh, we cannot uh, transfer realizations. If the Buddha could transfer realizations, it would be great, right? <laughs> So when you call the Buddha, Buddha or the Buddha mind omniscient, it doesn't mean it's omnipotent, right? That's a big letdown, because many of us um, were brought up hoping um, that there was an omnipotent, all-loving entity, uh, God, or that could just you know change things if he or maybe she wanted to, right? I mean. That dwells a lot in our background, you know. Um, <clears throat> Dharma practitioners, we have to be aware of what we bring to the Dharma. And usually we bring some um, savior ideals, right? Like some something will just immediately take us out of our present reality and um, uh, we won't have to do the work. Of course, that's why we did drugs and drink, right? So it works. No. So, but uh, the real miracle is we're able to learn and we're able to progress and we're able to make that change. But it, it tends to be, um, on, you know, actually needing a lot of diligence. So when we look at our teachers, um, generally, um, our teachers want to say, give us correct teachings, <laughs> um, which I hope I've been doing over the years. So at some point, I, I, I feel like, OK, now all I, all I should be saying is keep going. Or all I should be saying is, you're there now stop, rest. So just like keep going <laughs> or rest. <clears throat> if we're on the correct path, uh, then 
usually we have to keep going but when we reach our destination then we have to like stop and look around <clears throat> so the real miracle is that we can actually learn we can take direction from a teacher we can actually even attain some intellectual certainty um, so that even when our personal experience doesn't match um uh, uh knowledge the wisdom the logic will support it right so those of us um and the scholars in the community here um are very fortunate because when we have studied meaning we've applied uh reasoning and logic and inference and of course personal experience then we have no doubts it's very possible to study uh, correctly, and then you, you have actually no intellectual doubts. Because when we think about it, most of the doubts are kind of intellectual, aren't they? But they come with a sentence. You know, I don't know. You know, we're thinking, I don't know, can I get enlightened? Will there be an end to the war? Will there, you know, they're, they're, they have a sentence, but they have, they have a cognition with them, right? Or doubts, right? So some doubts do have to be resolved intellectually, actually. You have to say, well, I'm, and, you know, it looks, it looks like this is kind of, Looks like there's water on the freeway on a summer day, but I know it must be a mirage, right? Must be a reflection. That's intellectual, right? So it, it's a miracle too that we can study and get some confidence. And then when we have direct, unmediated, uncontrived awareness, then um, the, the intellectual side and the experiential side, you know, match up in the middle. Isn't that nice? And that's a miracle. Things match up. The Buddha mind sees uh, things simultaneously, whereas when we're on the path, usually we have to alternate things. First, we do a little bit of this. And then we do a little bit of that, <laughs> you know, like that. You have to do it that way, mix it up a little bit. But the miracle is at some point we can see um, both sides at the same time. We can see the true middle way. That's a miracle. <clears throat> so the uh, study part um, as it's not necessarily reading a lot of books, but on the correct methodology of study um, so that uh, we're not going in circles. <clears throat> so having a correct methodology is um, a miracle, is magic. So I like repeating to myself, all teachers repeat themselves, you know, it's like, why do we do that? Because there's nothing else to say except say it again. I'm sorry, but I know it's like, my teacher's like that too. And of course, um, Lana Zopa was like that too. <laughs> you just say it like, okay, okay, I believe you. So uh, if uh, we are in a room and we're wearing uh, our nice earrings or rings or something, and when we entered the room, we, we looked at our uh, nice diamond or ruby ring, it's in there. Right, and then ten minutes later, if you looked, then um, the ring, the uh, ruby is gone. Right, that happens sometimes. It pops out, you know. To pick another jeweler, but anyway. So, is it logic or is it experience that tells you? the gem must still be in the room. Anybody? It's logic, right? 
it was there 10 minutes ago. You did not leave the room. It must be there, right? It must. That's not experience. You know, because you're not actually seeing like, you're not actually thinking like, well, Sodom, it's, it's, I know it's there because even though it's not on my finger right now or my ear, I, I see it over there. You don't see it. But because you know you did not leave the room, it must be there. Anybody want to dispute that? Good. <laughs> Makes my life easier. <laughs> However, that um, that is consoling, but um, we do want to find it. So what's the methodology? So normally we kind of panic, you know, we, we start doing this, you know, uh, don't I, don't I? That's not a good idea, actually, is it? Because, you know, it's a remarkable, you know, unless you have a two carat, it, you know, you fling it and it could then take off. Maybe it was right there. But anyway, uh, the, me the methodology is to, um, divide the room into uh, maybe with tape or mentally or little strings um, to uh, block it off on little sections, right? Maybe, you know, you, you get your string or you get your masking tape. You do not leave the room. Hopefully you have masking tape in the room or you're screwed, but you have you. When when you look at the square and you do not see the gem in the square, what do you do? You cover it over. What misguided sentient beings do is not cover it over. You, you search it with you with your magnifying glass, your flashlight. It's not there. Covered over. If you apply that methodology, then you will cover over all that where there's not the ruby, and you will find it. Once again, that's logic. Isn't that so? It's in the room. If you cover everywhere where it is not, you must find it, right? Oh, this is a good group today. <laughs> so the ruby, of course, is our Buddha nature. It must be there. <clears throat> and we will find it if we have the correct methodology. Running around in circles, probably not, right? Because then we'll go, I don't know, did I cover that or... Maybe I'd better go back it through a third time or a fourth time. You don't need, to, if you do it properly, there's no backsliding. You don't need to recheck. Rechecking is why is this kind of skipping process of samsaric dharma practice. You know, you never get traction, just skip. So there's the miracle of methodology. It equally applies to finding um, what's like n not there, right? So usually we think uh, that something exists when it doesn't. Of course, the, the Buddha's big insight is, I did not find an Atman. I did not find a, a self that has uh, permanence exists from its own side, is unchanging, is all pervasive, et cetera, et cetera. So the same actually methodology works. You look in the, is there a completely, is there an Atman in this little square? 
no, that's that's not that little square. Then you go then close it off. So through even through intellectual thing and methodology, you go, it cannot my sense of a personal identity or absolute identity cannot exist the way that is because I went through it with the methodology and I did not find it. So it cannot exist at it, as it appears to exist, right? So if I go through a methodology, uh, I will not be able correctly, I, which I've done as a kid, I will not be able to find the mirage or the rainbow. I don't know. I, I had, luckily, I had some kind of interesting parents. So I said, okay, I want to go look for the rainbow. So I said, you know, the, they're kind of scientific. So I go, well, the rainbow, you know, you, the rainbow is because the sunlight hits the light. And so actually, uh, my dad would drive me around to find the, you know, the rainbow, right? And that's sweet. Usually, parents wouldn't do that. They just go, we got to get home. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go around looking for the rainbows with you this weekend, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, like, we got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. We go look. No, the rainbow. How far? <laughs> Pretty far. So, <clears throat> the, we can become actually, you know, very, very strongly. We know it must be so, even though we don't directly experience it. So if we do enough study before we do the heavy yogic trainings, meaning that like Vajrayana Tantra trainings, then we've already understood it must be so. So we're not wasting our time. We're seeing that, okay, the how appearances appear must be a certain way, even though I I don't experience it that way. That must be a certain way. So the great Mahasiddhas not only had intellectual but experiential, like because they saw exactly how uh, appearances and emptiness are the same, then the actual miracles that we think of miracles can occur, right? You cannot do an actual miracle that we normally think of as miracles, like Tonton Galpo, you know, turning, taking a spear and putting a knot in it and things like that, or footprint, you know, on the um, on the stone like that, or attaining Jalu rainbow body. You, you cannot do it if you still, you know, have if the two experience and must be logic aren't, aren't the same, have to be the same. If you still have intellectual doubts and you try to, uh, you know, you're just too lazy, basically, sorry, you're just too lazy to uh, come to in, at least intellectual certainty and you think, well, I will have some kind of, um, confirming experience, and then I won't have to have intellectual certainty, what do you think will happen? It'll be a sieve, right? You're going to keep on having to repeat that experience, and it'll be very disappointing. So that's, you know, it's hard. It's very painful to see from teacher's side, like people have very good genuine experiences, but, um, you know, they picked the flower pot, the one with a hole in it, you know, so, or, you know, so many teachers, not just Buddhists, I said, you know, if you have a crack in the pot and the water, it was a big deal in India, like people are still, you know, women, of course, because they do all the work, um, then about four feet tall, you know, they have these jugs and they're actually carrying the head still, seriously going down to rivers. I wouldn't drink the river in India, but anyway, going down, you know, walking back, right? It would really be a drag to have a really hole in your clay pot. So there's uh, this idea that somehow 
we can meditate or experientially do away with uh, uh, having actually logical certainty, right? But then you're going to have a leaky pot. And then you're going to have to keep reviving the experience a lot. Which means you'll be so busy doing it, you won't be able, you'll have to keep traveling back to the river, you know. You won't really be able to help others as much. So that's a miracle that we can bring those two together at the same time. So many of the um, uh, great teachers um, uh, in my own lifetime, meaning Dalai Lama and Dujim Rinpoche, who are incredible scholars, right? Also incredible practitioners, right? Same way was with um, Guru Padmasambhava, Tsongkhapa, those two can go together, right? Sometimes people think oh, they don't go together if I study too much. However, uh, I'd like to say that um, it's difficult because uh, you, you're going to have to do um, uh, direct experience meditation, let me use that term, um, uh, the same amount as you're doing the study. You could do more, because study sometimes real quick, like you just get it. But if you're reading for two hours, and then you're only doing six minutes of meditation, sorry, something's off. I don't know any teacher that's actually done it that way. If you do, please stand up and tell me. There are really incredible genius people who can uh, hear the teachings uh, and they don't have to hear a lot. Early on, Shari Putra was one of those people, you know, just, uh, but there's no way you can uh, say, I'm going to read for two hours and then I'll just do yoga or um, direct experience meditation for six minutes. Oh, good, no one's arguing with me today. Being nice today. <clears throat> Generally, um, we, we have to do a lot of um, yogic meditation, but uh, if we're starting out from the wrong view, then um, that's like getting on I-80 thinking we're it happened to me once. I don't know. It's probably some family thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to go up to Nevada City. And I don't know what happened. I got on the 80. And this is weird. What's Davis doing here? Has anybody ever done that? Come on. Be, you know, yeah, usually, you know, you're just so preoccupied. Someone's sick or you're mad or just like, whatever. And you just actually get on the freeway and you're literally going the wrong direction. <laughs> So uh, the these uh, the miracle is that we're able to uh, bring together, you know, study and practice. We're able to bring together the logical mind and the complete um, awareness mind, and they're not in conflict at all. Appearance and emptiness not in conflict at all. You know, that's the true middle way, isn't it? Interdependence means we're not in. Uh, Emptiness and form are not in conflict. Emptiness, perception, not in conflict. Emptiness and feeling, not in conflict. So, uh, but it does take actually a lot of study. So it's going to take more than six minutes, right? 12 minutes a day? How much reading? We have to read and study until you reach certainty. The study by itself, you know, just reading, if you don't read till certainty, then what's the point, right? You must gain certainty. Likewise, an experience. So, so if you close your eyes and somebody, we should do this in college because <laughs> you have nothing else to do in Vermont in the winter. So 
we we give people different fruits or different things and you would blindfold them and then you'd have to say what what they are right can you be certain you're can you be absolutely certain you're you know like eating an apple could anybody talk you out of it or like a hot pepper no right yeah that's like that so you you want to study so you have complete certainty you know like i've been sent to the store to get three apples these are three apples that's it and you actually and then when you bite into it you know it's an apple the experience and the logic go together as the true dharma miracle they're not split at all so If I was my teacher, or like, um, <laughs> like, or like Tonkin Rinpoche too, like all the people I've stayed with, like, or Dujin Rinpoche, guess what? When I have talked for like, what, you know, maybe 35 minutes, I'd say, well, let's go over it again. Really? And then you go over again, and then you'd go, okay, I got it. And then the teacher would go, hey, you know what? Let's just go over one more time. But we don't have time to do that today um, because I, I want to do some Torah practice for Sasha. Um, so uh, this is, um, I don't know, do we have, uh, Um, right. So we're we're not going to do we're we're not going to do the uh, the sadhana, but um, instead we're going to do the um, uh, twenty one praises and then some uh, mantra, and then end with um, dedication prayers. I don't know. So if you've uh, had the um, uh, impairment, uh, you should generate um, self-generate as Tara, do self-initiation, or even if you haven't, you should have Tara in front of you and uh, realize that um, Tara wants you to take on all of her qualities and um, then uh, we're when we say dedicate uh, uh, the positive qualities, these are dedicating our Buddha qualities uh, to Sasha. So um, the miracle is that we have no no doubts. That's important for this. So. We, we can actually do it. Does that make sense? No doubts. Just like you're just saying these, these positive qualities, these are all going for uh, Sasha's journey, right? Like just the same as if, you know, we said, you know, here's, here's 20, here's, <laughs> Here's a hundred dollars for gas. So I was going to say twenty. Here's a hundred dollars for gas to go to San Francisco. You know this. That, that you you will put it in. That you'll use it. This would. We have no doubts. I have no doubts that Sasha will use this. Do you? I have no doubts. And it's effective. <clears throat> so we can do it together. Praises to the twenty-one Taras. Oh, my prostrate to venerable Arya Tara. Homage to Tara, swift female warrior, whose eyes dart and dash like lightning, born in a spreading lotus from a tear of the protector of the three worlds. Homage to you, whose face is composed of 100 full autumn moons, blazing with the radiant light of thousands of constellations of stars. 
homage to you whose hand is ornamented with a golden blue lotus born in water, who practices generosity, effort, austerity, pacification, patience, and absorption. Homage to you, the crown of the Tathagatas who conquers limitless obstacles. You are served by the children of conquerors who have obtained all perfections. Homage to you who fills the realms of desire, form a space with Tutara and whom You suppress even mundane realms beneath your feet and summon all beings without exception. Homage to you worshiped by Indra, Agni, Brahma, Vayu, Ishvara. You are praised by the assembly of elementals, zombies, Gandharvas, and Yakshas. Homage to you who destroys others' magic by proclaiming the syllables tray and pay. You fully blaze in a swirling inferno, suppressing with your right leg bent and left extended. Homage to you, great fearsome Trine, full of annihilating Mara warriors. You possess a ferocious lotus face that kills all enemies without exception. Homage to you, whose heart is adorned with the mudra representing the three jewels. You swirl within a mass of light from your palm wheel that pervades everywhere. Homage to you, whose joyful shining crown ornament radiates a garland of light. You control Mara's in the world with laughter, proclaiming Tutara. Homage to you, able to summon the entire assembly of guardians of the earth. You liberate all who are destitute through whom that moves your face frown. Homage to you crowned by the crescent moon fully blazing in every ornament from your luxuriant top knot Amitabha strongly radiates supreme eternal light. Homage to you abiding in a garland of flame like the fire of the eon of destruction with left leg bent and right extended you destroy enemies to the joyful turning. Um, Homage to you who strikes earth's face with your palm and tramples it with your foot. You subjugate the seven levels with a fierce glance and let her home. Homage to you blissful, virtuous, peaceful, who practices the serenity of nirvana. You destroy immense negativity through perfectly stating om and saha. Almost to you who subdue the bodies of enemies to prevent the joyful turning. You liberate through Hong, surrounded by the ten letters of your knowledge mantra. Almost to you the seed syllable Hong with the trampling feet of Ture. You shake Meru, Mandara, and Vidya, as well as the entire three worlds. Almost to you brandishing in your hand the moon appearing in the lake of the gods. You eliminate all poisons without exception by expressing tar twice in the letter pay. Homage to you served by the king of the divine assembly, ordinary gods and kimnaras. You eliminate disputes and evil dreams through the joyful radiance of your armor. Homage to you whose both eyes radiate with the immense light of the sun and moon. You eliminate strong epidemics and illness by twice reciting Hara and Tutara. Homage to you, possessing the mind of peace through establishing the three syllables. You are the supreme Ture who destroys evil spirits, zombies, and yakshas. I praise with this sweet mantra and pay homage 21 times. The enlightened beings are extremely pleased and shower down the superlative qualities of Buddha Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind, omniscient wisdom, supreme power, and infinite compassion in the form of a great shower of light rays. As I recite this mantra, I absorb and am blessed by this rain. Om Tari Tutari Tutari Swaha.
You may quickly become Guru Aryatara, Padma Drona, and lead each and every sentient being into your enlightened state because of these merits. May the supreme jewel of Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. So we can um, end with uh, dedication prayers. Uh, maybe okay to put on that screen too, I guess. So um, <clears throat> when doing this kind of practice, um, uh, we, we do it with absolute certainty, both uh, logical and experiential, because we know that uh, any uh, good uh, or sometimes we call them like virtuous mind state, enlightened mind state, um, must have uh, a corresponding result, right? Absolute certain, right? Logically and experientially, we can have that certainty. But of course, we can't, we are very concrete. We want to be able to see right away, <laughs> right away that, okay, did it work, right? So um, we don't, because we have absolute certainty based on our experience, our non-conceptual direct realization of emptiness and logic, then uh, we, we, we don't even have to check, right? It'd be nice to hear, like, be nice, like, Sasha comes to our dreams or appears and says, no, it's working, but we don't even need that. We can just go, it's, it absolutely must work, you see. We don't have to check. So my teacher used to say, just stop checking. There's investigating when we have to do, when we're doing uh, analytic meditation or study, but at some point, you, you know, don't check. You don't have to look back. Once you reach certainty, you don't have to check. You know, I know we all have a little spiritual OCD, right? Mm. <laughs> like... Was it really? Did it really work? You know, go back. Did I turn off the iron? You know, and uh, hopefully, you know, did I leave the coffee pot on? Hopefully, you don't get to Davis by the time you have to really drive back and leave the coffee pot. But so, you know, it, it really is wonderful when we have that absolute certainty, right? And that's, that absolute certainty is a benefit to. This is different than just blind faith, right? logic and actual direct yogic experience, then then there's no doubt you don't have to check. And that's the best thing we can do for others, right? The mind becomes completely peaceful. It's luminous and energetic because there's no there's no wobbling, right? Totally just very serene but energetic at the same time. Totally clear, very spacious, unlimited, right? As things just they match up totally. It's incredible, right? But it's just no doubt. Okay, so let's do dedication and closing. <clears throat> Due to the merits of these For his actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha, lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. The supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen, arise and grow, and that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In land encircled by snow mountains, we the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezig, Tenzin Gatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all my greatest achieve happiness. May they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Those all the <clears throat> display of the deep awareness of all victorious ones. Merciful giver of the stream found the vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Songkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Dosang Drakpa, I make request at your holy feet. Thank you.
Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Susan, too. So there's a um, some condolence cards, sympathy cards in the back. Where do you want to put them in the dojo? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll put them on for um, Joe, Carl, her um, Sasha's partner, and for Cynthia, her mother. So we'll put those in the back for signatures, um, along with some pens. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other thing I want to do, can I talk about cookies? Sure. Okay, so we're going to talk about cookies. Um, December 16th, I think, is a Saturday. And uh, we wanted to do sort of a community outreach thing. I've talked about this a little bit before, but we finally settled on a date, which is to bake homemade cookies and give a package of cookies to our neighbors. So there's about 60-ish apartments and houses along B Street. Um, and so we need, and hopefully we'll get volunteers to um, bake homemade cookies, um, a dozen, two dozen, five dozen, because that's about 60 cookies. Um, and we'll put them in little cellophane packages with a little tag that we haven't made yet that'll say um we hope you enjoy these homemade cookies happy holidays from lions or dharma center sort of you know thank them for letting us park right all along the street and to make contact with them and just you know so we're not just this weird church in the middle of their neighborhood we're a neighbor and um anyway so I would also really appreciate if somebody would be willing to be um, partner with me on sort of organizing this. Um, so if anybody wants to do that, come and see me in the dojo. Um, otherwise, just sort of put it on your calendar and think about making a couple dozen to three to four to five dozen cookies and bringing them. And we'll do this on the afternoon of um, December 16th, which is a Saturday. I'm sorry? So there's some questions here about no nuts for our cookies. So we're going to just say homemade and, and uh, that'll kind of forewarn people that the cookies come from all our homes. So um, anyway, so uh, beyond uh, this cookie uh, giveaway that we're going to do, that'll be a lot of fun. We're, we have uh, Lama Sankapa Day, which is a very special holiday in our tradition, and we're celebrating it on the actual day, which is December 7th, and that's a Thursday, and that'll be at 7 p.m. here, and, uh, and Rinpoche will be with us. And then um, and Connor is going to be our lead, but he has a sore throat today, so that's why I'm announcing it. And then the, we're going to also celebrate it again on December 10th, and Kamom will give us music. So it's very special. To, we're going to do it twice. And then the other thing is that um, we have a fundraiser. A generous a benefactor has um, done this matching donation. Uh, um, I'm not sure the exact words to use, but it's incredible. So whatever you give up to the end of this month, it will be matched up to $5,000. So that's just a really way to... Uh, be able to give like we would maybe anyway, but also uh, increase what we give. So I just wanted to mention those couple things. Thank you. Oh,